Hello everyone, I welcome you all in this video lecture. In this video lecture, we will study about the mechanics of train movement. Let us start with the essential mechanism required for the movement of the train. We have armature of traction motor and a pinion is connected to the armature of traction motor and the pinion is having a diameter that is D1. The tractive effort produced by the armature of traction motor that is transferred to the driving wheel through a geared wheel. So we have geared wheel and then it is transferred to the driving wheel. Geared wheel having diameter of D and then we have driving wheel. F1 is a tangential force generated by the armature of traction motor and that force is transferred to the driving wheel and the force generated at the driving wheel that is capital F. The direction of the movement we can see and the diameter of the driving wheel that is capital D. Gear ratio can be indicated as a gamma and that is a ratio of D to D1. Now let us derive an expression for tractive effort. The tractive effort at the edge of the pinion is transferred to the driving wheel by means of gear wheel. As per the laws of dynamics, to generate acceleration in any mass, we require force. So driving motor exert a torque T in Newton meter and tractive effort at the edge of pinion is capital T and that is F1 multiplied by D1 by 2 and in terms of force that is a 2T divided by D1 the expression is a in terms of force. Now let us uh, find the tractive effort which is transferred to the driving wheel that is expressed as uh, efficiency eta multiplied by F1 that is a uh, force generated at the pinion and multiplied by D by capital D that is a ratio of diameter of uh, geared wheel and driving wheel. Now we can substitute the value of F1. So if we substitute the value of F1 as a 2t divided by D1 and the expression can be rewritten in simplified form that is eta multiplied by 2t divided by D capital D multiplied by D divided by D1 the ratio of uh, D divided by D1 that is a gear ratio and that can be written as a gamma. So finally we can write the equation for the tractive effort F that is eta multiplied by 2t divided by D and multiplied by gamma. Gamma is a gear ratio. Now let us see the coefficient of adhesion. The amount of tractive force generated that depends on the total weight coming to the driving axle and coefficient of adhesion. The maximum frictional force between the driving wheel and the track that is equal to mu multiplied by W where mu that is coefficient of adhesion between the driving wheel and the track and W that is a adhesive weight that is a weight of the train on the driving axle. So to avoid the slip 
effective effort the force generated must be either equal or less than this product mu w if force tractive effort force is greater than the product mu w then there will be a slip the coefficient of addition mu can be defined as a ratio that is a maximum tractive effort that can be applied without the slipping of wheel to adhesive weight and that is weight on the driving wheel so as we discussed earlier the total amount of tractive effort to be generated that depends on the total adhesive weight that is the total weight on the driving axle and coefficient of adhesion with the increase in the speed coefficient of adhesion decrease in a very dry rail condition of the track it may be as great as 0.25 and in case of a greasy condition of the track it may be less as less as 0.08 so the force generated that depends mainly on the coefficient of adhesion now let us see the tractive effort for propulsion of the train the effective force necessary to propel the train at the wheels of locomotive is called the tractive effort now the total tractive effort required to run a train on the track that is divided into three major part the first part that is tractive effort required for linear and angular acceleration second part tractive effort to overcome the effect of gravity in case of gradient tractive effort to overcome the train resistance so total tractive effort to be generated that has to overcome all the three different function so now uh, let us see the total tractive effort required for the propulsion of the train it can be mathematically expressed as ft the force required that is tractive effort t suffix indicate tractive effort and that is equal to summation of all the three different types of forces we require to overcome different conditions fa that is a uh, acceleration fg that is g for uh, gravity and fr that is a uh, force required to overcome the resistance r suffix we use for resistance plus minus sign we use for a uh, gradient in case of up gradient we use the plus sign in case of down gradient we use a minus sign now let us see each individual force and we derive the required equation for each individual different forces let us start with the tractive effort required for the acceleration as per the laws of dynamics force is required to accelerate the motion of the body and as per this definition force is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration in case of train let us consider w that is the weight of the train in tons and alpha that is acceleration in kilometer per hour per second now tractive force we need to calculate and that is uh, in newton so we need to convert certain data as per our requirement now let us consider mass of a train and that is m is equal to 1000 
W kilogram. So now we have converted our data from ton to kilogram. In same way, acceleration is alpha in kilometer per hour per second, but it can be converted as alpha multiplied by 1000 divided by 3600 in meter per second square. As we require force in Newton, we need to convert this data and it can be written as acceleration can be written as 0.2778 alpha meter per second square and therefore total tractive effort required for linear acceleration can be expressed as FA that is the product of mass multiplied by acceleration so it can be written as a 0.2778 multiplied by W that is the weight of the train and multiplied by alpha. Now this force or tractive effort can be expressed in Newton. We have considered required force for the linear acceleration. But at the same time we have a rotational part and in case of rotational part, they will have an angular acceleration. So total tractive effort we require for the acceleration that is a arithmetic sum for tractive effort required for a linear acceleration as well as tractive effort required for the angular acceleration. In case of rotating part like a motor they have angular acceleration. Subtractive effort required for angular acceleration of rotating part, it can be written as F8, it is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration. And the same equation we use, but in case of weight, we take a WE and WE can be effective weight of the train. Effective weight is greater than total dead weight of the train because we are now considering angular acceleration also and effective or equivalent weight that is 8 to 15 percent more. So for the sake of simplicity we consider effective weight while calculating total tractive effort required for linear as well as for the angular acceleration. Now let us consider tractive effort to overcome the effect of gravity. When a train is on a slope, a force of gravity equal to the component of the dead weight along the slope acts on the train and tends to cause its motion down the gradient. Let us see in the diagram so we have a slope of the gradient and we have our object so the opposite force because of gravity because of effect of gravity that is a uh, on the down gradient that is w w is a weight of the train and w sin theta Tractive effort to overcome the effect of gravity can be expressed as Fg, g suffix we use for gravity and that can be written as a 1000 W, 1000 W we use for weight in kilogram and multiplied by sin theta, theta is angle of gradient. In railway, gradient is expressed as a rise in meters in a track distance of 100 meters and described as percentage gradient. It can be written as a capital G. So percentage gradient G is equal to 100 sin theta and therefore sin theta that is a percentage gradient G divided by 100. Now in our equation of uh, 
FG that is a force due to gradient that is a 1000 W sin theta. Now we substitute the value of sin theta and our equation for FG becomes a 1000 W multiplied by G divided by 100 and after simplification it becomes a 10 W G in kilogram but now we require to convert into Newton so we multiplied by 9.81 so ultimately the equation for FG becomes 98.1 WG now it can be expressed in Newton so this is total tractive effort required to overcome the effect of gravity at last let us see tractive effort required to overcome the train resistance train resistance consists of all the forces resisting the motion of a train when it is running at a uniform speed on level track it normally consists of the friction at the various part of the rolling stock friction at the track and air resistance the general equation for Train resistance can be written as a capital R is equal to K1 plus K2 V plus K3 V square where K1, K2 and K3 that is a constant of the train condition. It depends on the shape and size and atmospheric condition and V that is kilometer per hour and that is speed. R is a resistance but now the tractive effort required to overcome the train resistance can be written as W multiplied by R in Newton. W we know that it is a weight of the train and R that is specific resistance in Newton per ton of the dead weight. So this way now we have derived the expression for all the three different tractive effort required to generate a total tractive effort and therefore total tractive effort as we know that Ft that is equal to Fa plus minus Fg plus Fr and now we can substitute all the different tractive effort individual tractive effort in the equation and it becomes 277.8 we alpha plus minus 98.1 wg plus wr plus sign we use for up gradient minus sign we use for down gradient so this way we can derive the expression for the total tractive effort ft thank you for watching my video keep watching thank you very much